The emergence of solar energy as a primary power source is transforming rural communities across Kenya. Unlike traditional power generation projects with their intricate transmission and distribution networks, solar energy is paving the way for decentralized and accessible power infrastructure, and harnessing this electric power from the sun is proving to be a lifeline for low-income rural households that have long been in the shadows of energy poverty. We opted for solar power despite having grid access due to its cost-effectiveness. The whole country is literally in the Sun Belt region, which means that um, solar is one of our most important electrification technologies. We need solar to energize the country, whether it's for backup, because a good number of people in rural communities have a lot of blackouts. Many of our customers express dissatisfaction with increasing electricity expenses and supply interruptions, which are typically the primary factors motivating them to transition to solar power. A significant portion of these solar systems in use in rural areas are component-based solar systems, or CBSS. These CBSS configurations are simple, yet ingenious. Comprising fundamental components purchased from local shops, they typically include a solar panel to capture the sun's energy, a charge controller to regulate the flow, a battery, often 12 volts or multiples thereof, to store the harvested power, and a selection of load appliances operating on either DC or AC through an inverter. Where professional solar technicians are absent, these systems are usually pieced together by local handymen or even self-assembled by the end users. People are going to just their local electricians or people that they know have done electrical installations before and just assuming, okay, this person can do electrical installations. I'm sure they can do a similar job for my solar installation. What are the challenges that could arise when retailers or installers of this system lack a comprehensive understanding of which components work seamlessly together, potentially compromising the safety and reliability of the installation? For several weeks, a dedicated team of researchers and innovators from Strathmore University immersed themselves in the communities of Makweni and Machakos counties. With a mission to connect with retailers, installers, and users, delving deep into the challenges inherent in the area of component-based solar systems. The, between... the question I've asked everyone, every consumer I've met is, how did you buy your solar system? And until now, no one has told me I went to the EPRA website, found this list of technicians, and then I asked them to do the installation for me. No, everyone says I walked into the market, walked into a retailer's um, a shop, and got an installation done. Which means the gatekeepers of quality in the ecosystem are the retailers, followed by, I'd say, the technicians. We cater to a diverse range of clients. Some are constrained by budgetary considerations, and seek solar installations within their financial limits. On the other hand, there are those who are willing to incur higher expenses, prioritizing quality work over cost. Throughout my experience in solar installations, no one has ever requested my qualification papers. The majority of my customers come through referrals or word of mouth. Um, some of you mesema, Most of the um, retailers, as we've seen while we were doing the initial baseline, do not have information on how to size a, solar, a good quality solar system. Um, an example being, um, if you ask them the question of how do you determine what size of solar panel you put with what size of a battery, you get varied answers. And when you ask, you interrogate where those ratios are coming from, what you get at the background is that um, most of them um, got this just from, it's kind of someone, some, someone told them something, it's not based on any scientific evidence or technical knowledge on how solar systems should be sized. What this would result in when it comes to the um, households is that um, we've talked to a couple of people who, um, in one instance, someone said um, they have a system without a charge controller. This can result in a lot of things. It can cause fires. So you invest in something that should last in for five years, but because it wasn't sized properly, or because the person who was sizing it was your retailer who has no clue what 
sizing a solar system means, um, you end up with a situation where the system has defects, so you buy batteries frequently, you replace the inverter every now and then. In addition to instances where the recommended systems suffer from inadequate specifications, sizing or installation, the research team also unveiled another issue, the prevalence of unsuitable or counterfeit components in the market. When acquiring stock from large companies, we often purchase in bulk, lacking the opportunity to meticulously test each component. Consequently, there have been instances where a component labeled as 18 volts actually measures only 10 volts upon testing. This leads to substantial losses for our customers. There's a time I went to buy a, a battery. It, it indicated. I once purchased a battery with a labeled voltage of 24 volts, but when fully charged, it only measured 14 volts. We're building a sizing tool. We're going to talk about that during the course. Striving to tackle the observed challenges linked to component-based solar systems in the field, the team of researchers and innovators is presently in the process of creating a groundbreaking technology known as the SunSafe app. This innovative app aims to capitalize on the widespread adoption of smartphones in Kenya, exceeding 60%, with the potential to revolutionize solar installations. You can enter different um, multiple loads. Those are the things that you're using, your phone, your fridge, your, um, uh, you know, your bulbs. So you enter them and then the application tells you um, you need to add the size of a battery, you need to add the size of a panel, um, you need to add the size of a cable um, so that you don't have to make that decision for yourself. We'll help you uh, make that decision um, through the app. Part of developing the app will involve training some of the retailers to use the application. So this will give a good opportunity to actually improve the knowledge on some of the safety concerns, even demonstrate to them oh, this is years. part of what we've seen in the field from the data we've collected. And this kind of installations are alarming because of this and that. And this is how to do it the proper way. It's at least one way we get to increase and improve the knowledge out there regarding proper installations and safety concerns. The impending launch of the SunSafe app marks a significant milestone. In our next episode, we embark on a journey with the research team, retailers and installers, exploring their experiences with the app. We'll delve into how it facilitates the assembly and recommendation of properly specified and sized systems systems that are not only safer, but also more reliable and longer lasting than those in use today.